Welcome to the day in history for May 11th, day 56. Today is the day that the HMS Beagle is launched, which would later take Charles Darwin on his famous scientific journey. Now, um, today, the big idea is that this is a journey that changed the world. And it really did. Because it brought up a very uh, new idea that some people have been talking about, but that was later published 20 years after Charles Darwin's voyage, um, called The Origin of Species. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll let you guys write this down. Okay, we are in London again. We're in London. Yeah, I know. We're there a lot. A lot of important stuff happened there. But we are actually at the Royal Shipyard, or the Woolwich um, shipyard in London. And this is actually where the HMS Beagle was uh, built. Now, the HMS Beagle was a type of ship that they actually made about a hundred of, um, and the HMS Beagle was just one of them. And they were very hardy ships, and they had a cool design. Now, they were more spacious than, say, uh, Cook's ship. Um, now, James Cook's ship, we saw, especially if you watch the video of the uh, students taking a tour, there were some places that were just so cramped because they wanted to put a lot of people on there um, and have a lot of room for supplies. But this, the HMS Beagle had a little more room because it was more of a scientific ship. Um, and so they made extra room for the people working on it. It had quite a few little boats that they could use because they would often pull up somewhere and then they would um, go out and, uh, and use their ships to explore. So, pretty cool ship. Now, the first time the HMS Beagle was used was actually for the coronation or the crowning of King George IV. Not the third, the fourth. Because we're in 1820, post-Revolutionary uh, um, War, post-French Revolution. Um, and so we're kind of in a new era now. We're actually in a new era that has a lot of science and technology happening, which is pretty exciting. Now, the HMS Beagle is famous because of Charles Darwin, this guy right here. At 22 years old, he embarks on a five-year long mission. We'll talk more about that in a second. But Charles Darwin was born in a place called Treesburg Shropespire in uh, England. Um, and he grew up to a, a decently well-off family. Um, they weren't extremely religious. And Darwin actually grew up um, really thinking of science. He wasn't, um, he wasn't known for being an extremely religious person. Now, the, the history of Darwin, the history of the origin of species and evolution and religion is a really big, controversial topic. Um, and there's still a lot of people debating it nowadays. The vast majority of scientists believe that Darwin was correct for the most part, but there is still a lot of arguments going on. So I'm gonna try and stay away from the arguments and let's just talk about the journey and Darwin. Now, this book is what really made Darwin famous. It's called The Origin of Species. And I wanted to show you this first because it was published in like 18, like 1859, around there. And it was 20 years after Darwin's uh, journey on the Beagle. So let's talk about the journey on the Beagle before we go into more about the origin of species. Now, the Beagle went on a five-year ex uh, exploration mission that went all the way around the world. They went to the Brazilian jungle, the Andes Mountains, Australia, and most famously, the Galapagos Islands. Someday I would love to go to the Galapagos Islands. And if you ever go there, send me an email because I'll probably still be a teacher. Now, the Galapagos Islands are a really interesting set of islands because of how different they are. Now, this is just a small group of animals that are found there. And some of these animals are only found on the Galapagos Islands. And this was really fascinating for Darwin. Now, Darwin's job was a naturalist. His job was to study the animals, the geology, and the plants of the places that he went. Now, remember, this is a time of scientific exploration. This is a time when humans, we wanted to know the animals, the plants, the land, how things worked, how many there were. We wanted to measure them. We wanted pictures of them. We wanted all this information. 
Okay, and so Darwin was one of those people that was hired to go out and collect this information. Now, um, these are the islands. This is actually one of the maps that uh, came out of this um, journey. And what's cool is that these islands are close, but they are so very different. And this actually led to uh, Darwin coming up with his what many people refer to as his theory of evolution or the origin of species. Now, the finch, the Galapagos finches, is an excellent example of what we're talking about. Now, what Darwin noticed was that there were finches on each island, but they were different. Okay, the bird themselves were fairly similar, but he noticed that depending on what the finch ate, their beak would be different. So a, um, a finch that uh, caught mainly insects would have a certain type of beak. A, uh, a finch that would eat hard like nuts or something would have a stronger beak. And so he actually figured out that these different birds at different locations were actually changing over time to adapt or to change to their environments. And this had a huge impact on his later work on evolution and the origin of species. Now, he took really detailed notes. This is actually a famous picture of his tree of life that was found in his notes. Um, and he was very meticulous. This is some of his like his his like quick note taking, but he has journal page after journal page of what actually happened um, on his journey. And remember, it was five years and he didn't have a lot of people to talk to. There were a lot of people on the ship, but he could only talk to a few of them. And I mean, when I say talk, I mean have lengthy intellectual conversation, not like, hey, how's it going, dude? Stuff like that, right? And so he spent a lot of time thinking, a lot of time writing, um, and he really enjoyed the locations that he went to. Now, he did have some problems with seasickness, but I'm pretty sure he got over that. Now. Let's talk basically about what Darwin is famous for. He's famous for something called natural selection or survival of the fittest. Now, if we look at this here, we start out with a ball. This is our organism. And the ball has mutations or changes when they have children, okay? So this ball has three different children, each with different characteristics. In this case, it's the color of the sphere. Now. Because of the environment they're in, and remember, this is all hypothetical, it's just made up, the um, red sphere, uh, excuse me, the red sphere and the orange sphere survive better than the light yellow sphere. And so those two spheres go down and they have babies. And it turns out that eventually, as you can see down here, it's the darker color spheres that have the best chance of survival. And so, after generation after generation after generation, the really light-colored spheres are gone, and the dark-colored spheres reproduce more. So there's more dark-colored spheres. Basically, that's how it works. Now, if we look at it like this, let's look at this moth, okay? Can you see the moth? It's pretty camouflaged, right? How did this moth figure out how to camouflage itself so perfectly against this piece of wood? Well, it's a really good question. Now, if we look at these two moths, if you were a bird that loved to eat moths, and there's plenty of birds that like to eat moths, which, which moth do you think you're gonna eat first? The dark colored moth or the light colored moth? Which one can you see better? Yeah, the light colored one, right? And so, if the light colored moth gets eaten, is it going to have babies? Probably not, right? So the dark colored moth is going to reproduce more. And the dark colored moth is gonna have babies that are probably dark colored. And so what that means is that over time, the white moths disappear and the black moths, are they have more of them. Now, this picture is kind of cool, but there's also light colored trees that the white moth can live on. But in general, it goes that the animals that are more adapted to their environment have more babies. Now, um, another example that uh, um, Darwin thought about and kind of came up with was the evolution of animals. 
Now, if we look, you can see how a long time ago, this is the evolution of whales, for example. There's a lot of stuff you guys can look up on this. But it starts out way back with a little and a little mammal running around on ground, right? And then the mammal realizes that it can get lots of food in the water. And so it starts to live in the water. And as it lives in the water, it changes. And over time, the mutations that help it survive in water more make it easier for those animals to get food, which means that those animals have more babies. And so over time, that animal will actually change into a whale. It's kind of crazy to think about, but if you do enough study, if you think about it enough, if you work it out and you do the research, you can see how these different animals are connected. And it's similar to the day in history where we talked about the Piltdown Man. You remember how we wanted to find the missing link between apes and humans? Well, we wanted to find that link so bad that we made one up. Pretty interesting stuff. Now. I'm gonna leave you with a virtual tour of the HMS Beagle. I found it on YouTube. It's like 40 seconds long and it actually takes you down the length of the ship. I thought it was pretty cool because it kind of gives you a human sized perspective on, uh, on what the Beagle was like. Now there's a chance that when I go and try and put this video in my, um, my presentation that it won't work. So if it doesn't work, I'm sorry, but if it does work, great, and maybe I'll add more videos later. So uh, thank you for the day in history. I'm excited for you guys to see this. This would make a really, really, really good research topic because I can guarantee you, you're gonna see this in probably middle school, you're gonna see it in high school, you'll see it in college, and it's something that we're gonna be talking about uh, in the future. We're talking about it now because evolution and how humans and creatures and animals and plants arrived on this earth and look the way they do is still a topic that many people discuss today. So, bye guys, thanks.